What's up Midnight Strikers, welcome back to another video, and long time no see by the way, I actually took a few personal days off to spend with my girlfriend and family, but with that being said, I am back with a brand new request video, this time a landmark request video of sorts, because I'm actually covering a death metal band. That's right, the band in is entitled Opeth, the album Blackwater Park from 2001. Now, I am not the biggest death metal fan, I'll just say that right off the bat, haven't really given... Uh, Morbid Angel a chance, I haven't really given Opeth a chance, haven't really even really give the genre a chance to say the least, but I have heard a few things off of Illa Divinum Insanus, so I cannot, I cannot be the greatest judge of death metal. I might as well just, you know, go out and listen to all of it at once, but then again, I don't want to flood myself with a specific genre of me metal or music. I was going to say music, then I said metal, but I digress. Then again, this is a very good album. It actually kind of reminds me of Tool a little bit. If you took Tool and Alice in Chains and added in a little bit of death metal influence and tweaked the death growls a little bit, you know, with some vocal harmonies and some awesome cleans, you would probably get this album. I don't know, like, when I was reviewing Dirt, I talked a lot about the atmospheric elements placed in most of the songs to make them a lot more harmonic or harmonizing, per se, while retaining the heaviness aspect that was on their previous album, Facelift. But Tool, with Tool, I also praised this element, but they added in a lot of, you know, weird effects and crazy guitar work and that crunch production that just really added to the kick, the flavor of the album. It's like they took everything that was great about those two bands, at least in this album, and added in a death growl, added in some death metal elements, and, you know, added in some really atmospheric production. I don't know, it's just, it really sounds good, I really like it, and I could not be any more pleased with my introduction into the actual genre with the exception of Illa Divinum Insanus, which we won't even discuss in the same realm. Let's push that out of here. I will actually be reviewing Opeth's newest album, so be on the lookout for that. I'll actually give that one a chance, too. I might as well, you know, go back and listen to all their material, but, you know, that is for a different video on a different day. So, let's get into the album, shall we? The album kicks off with The Leper Affinity, which actually has a really kind of mid-tempo, on um, more borderline on the faster side, or faster-paced guitar riff, and it's more, you know, riff-centric, where it's centering around a specific riff with the drums all intact. It's very, you know, a little bit more on the atmospheric side, not as much as, say, the next song, Still Beneath, or Still Day Beneath the Sun, excuse me, I got that one wrong, but I don't know, it just... With 10 minutes and 23 seconds, it just seems like it runs on a little bit too long. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really do like the death growls, everything was really in nicely placed, everything was where it needed to be, but when it came to the length and the runtime, it just seemed to drag on for a little bit too long. That's not to say that the song is bad, however, I did enjoy listening to it. There was only like maybe one or two songs that I didn't really like that much on this entire album. This one was one of the ones that I wasn't really one of my favorites, but you know what? Then again, there were a lot of great things on it. So, track number two is entitled Bleak, and honestly, this is probably one of, if not my very favorite song on the album, due to its really heavy, dark, and doomy atmosphere. It's a very riff-centric song, and the drums provide an atmospheric backdrop, as well as the death growls, just being the cherry on top, the icing on the cake, just for this style of song. It just goes well together, it goes together perfectly, and I really like it. It's probably, like I said, one of my favorite songs on the album, if not my very favorite. It's 9 minutes and 15 seconds, but unlike the first song, The Leper Affinity, it doesn't really drag on, or doesn't really feel like it's dragging on for far too long. It feels like it is the perfect length. So, the next song, The Drapery Falls, kind of reminds me a little bit of One by Metallica in terms of pacing, where it just kind of goes on, you know, a little bit, you know, goes on a little bit slower, a little bit softer, and then builds up tension and heaviness as it goes along. And then all of a sudden, before just exploding with just riffage, I guess, riffage and aggression, because this, towards the end, towards the latter half of this song, is very aggressive, it's very fast-paced, and really heavy, actually, so it starts off soft and then just gets heavier as it goes along, much like one in that respect. So, like I said before about pretty much every song on this album, the guitar work is there, it's very atmospheric, it's very heavy, 
very doom and gloom, very dreary. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but it is very good. It's very articulate in its design. So one of the best parts about this album, the drums are where it needs to be. Everything is where it needs to be. So the next song, Dridge for November. I apologize if I said Dridge or Drig, whatever it is, wrong. But, hey, I'm just reading on off Windows Media Player. So this song is much in the same vein as the last one, The Drapery Falls. But it's a lot softer. It's a lot more downbeat and downplayed than the last song. You know, one could even say that it's not really heavy at all in the beginning section of the song. But then it really gets aggressive towards the latter half, much like I said with the Drapery Falls, and it's very articulate in its design with the drums, the guitars, and especially the harmonies. The clean vocals are a very important part of this song, and like I said, in some parts of this album they don't really go well with the type of music they're going for, with the type of approach that they're going for, but that is not the case in this song. In this song they fit perfectly, especially in the first parts of the song before they get into the real aggressive death growls sections. So the funeral portrait is the next one and this one is actually a return to the heavier side of Opeth, at least from what I've seen on this album. It's a little bit faster, not as quite as fast as say the later parts of Bleak or the beginning of the Leper Affinity, but it is very good in its own right. Awesome guitar parts, really great drums and awesome harmonies. Um, Patterns in the Ivy, this one is a very atmospheric instrumental. It's part one of a two-part song. The second part is a bonus track that I will be getting to in a little bit. But this part has a really nice piano in it, as well as some just really harmonic, kind of soft, laid-back acoustics a little bit, combined with a little bit of electric guitar, of course, because, you know, I guess it's Opeth. But, you know, this band is really varied on this album. I'm very impressed with just the amount of variety thrown into the instrumental section. I mean, any band can just pick up a guitar, hire a bassist, hire a drummer and a vocalist, and just, you know, call it a day. Call it a rock album. But these guys really go all out in just combining different parts, different sections, different genres of music together to form this kind of stuff. It's very unique. I've never seen it before. I've never seen guitar parts, just guitar melodies and harmonies, just so intricately woven together to form a cohesive product. I mean, it's it's amazing. I really like this, and I am definitely going to check this out. So, you know, check out further into their discography, that is. But as far as Patterns in the Ivy goes, this is probably the most unique song on the album, or the mo most unique instrumental, that is. I mean, it is just... Wow. And then it leads into Blackwater Park perfectly. And Blackwater Park probably has the most interesting, or intricate, interesting, has the most intricate design in the guitar parts, the most articulate, and just most th well thought out, I suppose, I should be saying. And this is probably my favorite song guitar-wise, as well as my favorite song in terms of heaviness and aggression. I mean, Wow. The death growls, are, for one, are just mind-blowing. I really like some of the cleans. There are few cleans in this song, but, you know, they do fit in this version. The next song I'll get into, they don't really fit that well, but th for this one, they fit perfectly. The lyrical content is just soaring high. It's really good, and a great way to close off the standard edition of this album. Now, before I give it a rating, I am going to get into the three bonus tracks that were included when I got this album. So, Still Day Beneath the, the Sun, I almost said Beneath the Night, but Still Day Beneath the Sun. This is a interesting song. It's very slow. The guitar work is very precise and very experimental, I suppose, but it's a slower and softer song with a lot of cleans thrown in there by the vocalist. Don't know the band members' names yet, but a lot of stuff thrown in there by the vocalist, clean-wise. And I heard they have two clean albums as well, where the entirety of all of the vocals are sung clean, one of which being their now more most recent album from 2011. I hear they're coming out with a new album. So yeah, as I said before, I will be reviewing that. So basically, this is kind of a step towards that direction a little bit. And, you know, for some reason, the style of vocals really reminds me of Ozzy Osbourne from Black Sabbath, his Planet Caravan. I don't know why. I mean, the style of the song is completely different, but that vocal touch 
really reminds me of it. And I am really glad they didn't include any death growls in this song because it would not have fit, or at least in these sections that I'm talking about. You know, they're really slow and articulate sections, that is. But the next song is Patterns in the Ivy 2. Now, this is part two of a two-part medley, um, Patterns in the Ivy. And I don't know whether or not to listen to it right after Patterns in the Ivy or after Still, the, Still Day Beneath the Sun because it is a two-part song. At first, you know, I thought they would go together, but I guess not. So, Patterns in the Ivy 2, this is another one that is a little bit more on the aggressive side, a little bit more on the heavier side, but it's also very atmospheric, and the drumming especially, the drum work, is very good on this song. In addition to the death growls, not, that's not to say the guitar work isn't, you know, phenomenal as usual, but that is something that by this point we have grown to expect from a band like Opeth. So, Harvest is the next one. What a perfect way to close off the album. I mean, this song is great. Not one of the best songs on the album, but it is still very good. One of my favorites, I guess, you know, in terms of the weaker songs on the album, in terms of, you know, like, the Leper Affinity, wasn't really too big of a fan of it. Harvest, I mean, it was a good song, but I like Harvest a lot better than I like the Leper Affinity, or at least somewhat. So, with that being said, I'm going to give this album a solid 9 out of 10. I really like it. Definitely urged me into checking out Opeth's discography. And I hear, you know, even a lot of the bigger reviewers hold this band in high regards, even to say that they are the best death metal band around. I might even get into some Morbid Angel or some other death metal albums. So, first death metal album review ever. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for requesting this video. This is Midnight Strike 3625. Hope you enjoyed. Keep calm and rock on.